come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that happens, guess what, every Saturday. <gasps> every Saturday? Every single one. I know. Oh Who would have thought with that title? Oh my These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. I was about to go old, like old English. Be like, thy name is Holly. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. What dost thou we watch tonight? <laughs> we doth watched Sleepy Hollow. Mm-hmm. Ooh, from not, the year. Not the legend of or anything, just Sleepy Hollow. 1999. 99. We're on the 25th anniversary of Sleepy Hollow. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Who directed this feature film? Uh, Timothy Burton. The legendary mm-hmm. Timothy Burton. <laughs> the legendary <laughs> Timothy Burton. Yeah. Our first Tim Burton. Our first Tim Burton. Show? I was shocking wa- to me. I was wondering if we had done Mars Attacks. Yeah, I was like, Mars um, Attacks yeah. hasn't been on here. That'd be yeah, funny. Ed I, Wood hasn't been on here. Oh. Right, yeah, I thought like, about that too. too good. No, Ed we did done. I mean, no, this is it. No, we didn't do Ed Wood. We no. did. We did. Um, I know we did Plan, Plan 9. Nine. Plan 9, yeah. yeah. We didn't do Ed Wood? No. Yeah. I'm shocked. The 2001 Planet of the Apes has not come to this right. podcast it's yet. The weirdest that is, movie. It's because I don't want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that, but then I think about Abraham Lincoln at the end yeah. of that movie, and I really want to watch yeah. it again because that ending is so stupid. Can you just go home and watch the ending and leave <laughs> us out of it? Right. <laughs> the makeup effects in that are great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. And the they, cast is like surprising. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that was the start of the bad, right? That was the tipping point. What 2001, is, so what do you Planet bad of the Eighth, Tim Burton. Um, anything post, I think, 2000 yeah. is bad. Even his, uh, I would say, Big Eyes is the yeah. best movie of the last oh, yeah. 20 Big years. Fish and all the dramas that mm-hmm. he did. That yeah, not any non horror stuff he did. But he, yeah. but he's done. He did Dumbo. He did Charlie oh, and the yeah. Chocolate Factory. Yeah. This guy's been Alice in Wonderland, and he do that. Yeah, he's been churning yeah. out both of them. CGI yeah. garbage for 20 years now. I just yes. recently saw Beetlejuice, the sequel. Yeah. Ooh, this might, this might be a hot take. Um, you'll hear about it on our end of year. <laughs> oh, episode. shit. Oh, shit. Um, but One of the I, best movies of the year, it sounds had- like forgotten what Tim Burton used to be like yeah. until we watched this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It hits a point where something breaks and then it never recovers. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. 100%. He did Miss, the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. He did, yeah. yeah. Dark, I mean, he Which did Dark okay. Shadows. We would have to ask Colin how he yeah. feels about that one. Yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Well, I that like hasn't the original Dark Shadows, yeah. so it's it's right. off to me. Yeah. But it, mm-hmm. as a Tim Burton movie, it's oh, it's did. in league with this. Okay. Thing, he did Sweeney Todd. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, that's the one that could seen. be on this show too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Corpse Bride. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, yeah. Charlie when, Charlie where was Big, Big Fish, Fish in there? Big Fish 2003, just before Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Okay, so 20 years. 2005. God damn. So to me, it's like it's from it's everything pre Batman Returns, and then Ed Wood was different, right? And then after that, it's a different. Tim Burton for 20 years. Kinda, yeah. yeah. Right? He gets kind of... Mars Attacks in 96. Yeah. Is, it, is it Helena Bottom Carter's fault? Might be, because she enters around this yeah, time, I was doesn't like, she? I'm seeing a pattern here. Yeah. She, was, she, was she wasn't in, the in it, and then she wasn't yeah. in it, and I think I feel like that's the dividing factor. Do you think she yokoed up I this? think she yokoed Burton. <laughs> yeah. Are, they, not, are yeah. they together anymore? No, no they, they haven't been for a while. Because I would have expected her to be in this. No, but yeah. this has they, Lisa Marie in it. So yeah. is, is oh, there yeah, eras yeah. based on the and The, the girlfriend has errors. Monica Bellucci. Bellucci. Oh my God, he totally does this to us. I didn't know the girlfriend Monica Bellucci and him together. Oh, yeah, and she's like, a completely invented character to be like, here's my hot girlfriend in this in movie. In Beetlejuice, yeah. Beetlejuice. Yeah. Oh, not yeah. completely. Well, I mean, the finger was in the first one. Yeah. And here's the fingerless bride in this one. I mean, it kind of works. I don't know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> Holly's just Could laughing to herself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not, though. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's, you're, you're right. It connects. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, you know, even okay. beyond Tim Burton, though, in this movie, you have like a stacked, uh, you got a stacked cast, oh, yeah. you got a stacked crew. People came out of retirement for this movie. I know. This is like, this kind of was a big deal. Um, this you was said, a big like, deal. I remember when this came out. This was like a big movie. Yeah. I, there was TV spots for this all the time. All the time. I remember, I remember a lot yeah. of the stuff that came on, like that trailer. And, I yeah. That. I remember that. I was so excited for this movie mm-hmm. when it came out. Yeah. So excited. Yeah. And it's uh, produced by Francis. Is Ford Coppola. I think like the era that this comes from, right, is started with Bram Stoker's Dracula. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Coppola did this, you know, as a huge director doing gothic horror. 
and that kind of sparked a revitalization in gothic horror, right? That included uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. I mean, they did Wolf, which I guess is bringing kind of the Wolfman back. Yeah. And then we need to do that. One. Coppola do, must have that. had yeah. the yeah. rights to Sleepy Hollow, right? So is uh, the legend of Sleepy Hollow, right? Washington Irving mm-hmm. story. Yes. Is that like the oldest American ghost story? It's up there. Yeah. It's, it's got to be it's right? considered one of the oldest. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. So here's a question. How many iterations of that have we had? In the story, yes. Sleepy Hollow. Released in 1820. There you go. Was it Braun as a headless horseman scaring off it is the school teacher who up was to going? interpretation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm up, like, was it a ghost story at all? Yeah, oh, because, it's a ghost story, but Tim, was there really a ghost? Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, the story is quite different mm-hmm. from the actual story. They add yes. subplots and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's very and, different. And then uh, Ichabod Crane is not a school teacher, he's right. a detective. No. Right, it's very different. I'm also going off of the cartoon that came right. out. Right, we need to talk about the cartoon also, because and, and look, I Can ha- we segue to Are You Afraid of the Dark at some point? Oh, for sure. <laughs> okay. For sure. Like, this is my jam. We're covering all my bases with okay. this episode. Okay, alright, good. Yeah. <laughs> no, we need to talk about The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Yes. Disney's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. That's the one everybody, at least of our yeah. age mm-hmm. group, knows yeah. right? right it's like we which, grew up with it which it was is on funny every halloween it came out in like 1956 or something. right like right. right but it Forever became ago. like it was that and what the wind in the willow or mr mr toad, toad. Yeah. yeah was uh they were each half hour things yep. and mm-hmm. every halloween right we watched that every as a halloween. rite of passage mm-hmm. oh yeah that's why tonight like the fact that i'm not following this up or starting it with that one it's kind of like giving me the shakes because mm-hmm. it's just like built in me that i have to watch them both i'm gonna go home and watch the other one <laughs> just so you know like i have to watch them both um but yeah that's the one we all grew up with and that mm-hmm. that story is actually fairly close to the original short story yeah yeah because yeah. he's yeah it's, you know besides being crosby doing all the singing yeah right? which is, is fantastic and there is that? like this movie does pay some like acknowledgement to the, the fact pump, that the pumpkin a, throw the pumpkin is right throw. out of the throw. cartoon and the, um, i think the, that, the frog noises yeah when he's when he's walking across the bridge the mm-hmm. frog noises saying ichabod that's and from the him cartoon. landing on a horse backwards yep. at one point during the chase scene it's like that's from the cartoon not the story Story. Yeah. Is is it uh, in the story that he can't mm-hmm. cross the bridge? Yeah, where yes. does that come in? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. that's, I that's miss from the that story. from this movie. I yeah. kind of wish that was part of it. I kind of wish that too. They like they allude to it with the covered bridge, right? Mm-hmm. But they yeah, obviously break it. that rule. They like, do, yeah, because he does cross it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is part of the original story. Okay. Okay, and so we also know. I saw some interesting uh, credits in the writing. Right, the, yes. Um, Written by Andrew Kevin Walker, mm-hmm. right, who had done seven, yeah, eight mm-hmm. millimeter, and would later do the, wolf the Wolfman. Man. The yeah, Wolfman. The Wolfman. So uh, I was like, which thing are you pointing to, Colin? You've yeah. got multiple the things. Over there. So <laughs> the only thing Colin ever points to is the Wolfman. True, and I true. know there's more too the the screenplay credits, but um, the fact that Andrew Kevin Walker did this screenplay. Mm-hmm. When you look at like the stuff that he does, like because he did another gothic horror movie, The Wolfman, yes, but it's also kind of a detective story, yeah, yep. And this is a detective story, so is this like his way to get into it? He's like, you know, we're gonna make it a detective story, right? That's his framing device, yeah. that's how he can get but into I mean, it and write it, yeah. Realistically, though, like I get why they changed the story, it's a mm-hmm. short story and it works yeah. for a 35 minute cartoon. Yeah. Right. But there's not enough there to make it a full feature film. So no. the fact that they him. make it like a detective, like procedural, it makes sense. Right. You mm-hmm. can't just have him chasing a scared school teacher for two hours. Right. Mm-hmm. Or an hour and 45 minutes. Right. So you well, it turns out that you can because that movie was made and it had Jeff Goldblum in it. Was it 1990? Uh, it was the 80s. I want to say or late 70s. It was, yeah, it was another, made for TV movies. Oh, really? There was another one in like 1990, I think. What? Jeff Goldblum played Ichabod Crane? I want to say it was Jeff Goldblum, or am I thinking about this wrong? Was Robert Hayes in one, too? I don't know. Yeah, I remember seeing them. They were like, you know, after school, you know, things that you would watch. Right. Yeah. You know, three o'clock in the afternoon around Halloween would be. (laughs) But there was like a feature film. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jeff Goldblum was Ichabod Crane as a school teacher sure. in it for an hour oh, and a half. Why do I feel like I vaguely remember that? Yeah. yeah. And there's a reason they didn't do it for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they're trying to make it more exciting, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, you need to. Yeah. Michaela said the non horror stuff that Tim Burton has done. Is he a horror movie director? No. He was with this. With this? He's yeah. more of like a 
I don't know, like a macabre kind of yeah. guy. No, that's yeah. a great yeah, way to put it. Yeah, because it all kind of has this gothic fantasy element mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. But yeah, he, I think he likes the fantasy. He's got yeah. the mood and the atmosphere for sure. Right. Yeah. Always right. has, no matter what. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess was just like at any point was like the horseman scary. Was it? A scary I mean, this movie? is a violent movie. It's a very violent. Yeah, this is an yeah, R-rated yeah, movie. Yeah. Like yeah. eighteen plot. beheadings. In yeah. This movie. yeah, yeah. Did, did you count them? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was told in my research. Well, um, and, and, I mean, we've learned on this show that horror doesn't always have to mean scary. Right. True. That's it's like true. the Guillermo del Toro of horror. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. he loves horror. So, like, this is a guy who loves horror. Yeah. Especially yeah. classic horror. 100%. Right? Um, who's the. Uh, so, where did the idea for a big Hollywood remake of or updating of Sleepy Hollow come from? I mean, uh, I think Kevin Yeager was the one because it was always floating around Paramount at a certain point. And I think it's the early 90s, Kevin Yeager um, was kind of pushing for this. He wanted to be a, uh, a part of it. I mean, he wanted to direct it, first of all. And who is Kevin Yeager for the folks at home? Kevin Yeager, I mean, he's a, a, a practical effects a wizard. I mean, he's done tons of stuff that I can't I can't list everything. I mean, he's done um, uh, Child's Play. He's, mm. he was Him and his team were in charge of making Chucky. I mean, he's done Freddy, tons of shit. Yeah. Freddy, like, mm-hmm. um, I think yeah, Kevin the burn makeup is he, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. So he's done a lot. And so he kind of shepherded, the, he stuck with this for a little while. Um, they had some, I mean, he had some disagreements with the studio about this. Um, and at a certain point, um, they're like, well, uh, we're going to bring Tim Burton on because uh, this feels like a better fit. And he gracefully stepped aside once he learned that Tim Burton was going to be wrong. He's like, oh, that's a good idea. This Mm -hmm. would fit him for that. So it kind of started with him, him and Andrew Kevin Walker, I think, uh, came up or, or started throwing around the ideas for this. And then, cause that's why I think that's why there's a story by for mm-hmm. him and this. Uh, and then Andrew Kevin Walker ended up writing the script. I think Tom Stoppard, Tom Stoppard. Really? Uncredited? Did an uncredited rewrite of it oh. to tone down the violence of it. Cause it's an Andrew Kevin Walker script. Mm. So, I mean, Andrew I Kevin Walker scripts are usually like, uh, you know, when you read them, they're very like uh, period detail. Mm. Like, you know, this is the leaves were made of this is a specific tree and you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm. So I'm sure it reads, you know, interesting. It'd, sure. It'd be, I'd be curious to read the original script versus what Tim Burton did with it. But, right. um, so the project and then Coppola gets it together. Right. And there must've been yeah. that, even though it's, it's at a different studio, this is Paramount, not the Zotron. Sony where, uh, where Coppola was set up. Right. And so they're going to make this thing with uh, Kevin Wa- uh, Tim Burton, and the cast is like just stacked with. I guess mm-hmm. when I first saw this, I thought he's making his Hammer horror movie, Definitely. right? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. oh, for dear. sure. Just uh, with people he casts, with mm-hmm. the look of the film, with yeah. I mean, even I think um, Johnny Depp even looked to. Um, Christopher Lee and um, uh, Peter Cushing as inspirations for his character and sort of uh, those early characters. There were times that they when he was, especially when he was like deducing uh, the the mystery, like later on. Mm. I'm like, is he doing a Peter Cushing right now? You know, it I mean, it was like that kind of points. shrill. You know, like yeah, when he gets higher in the yeah. voice and everything, mm-hmm. it kind of feels like it. Um, who did um, who did the Vertilac? Was it Bava and was that Black Sabbath? It was Mario Bava. Yeah. Well, Bava did um, Black Sunday in black mm-hmm. and white, and okay. then Black Sabbath is like color, but they That's have the a similar look. Yes. But I think we commented on that episode when we did Black Sabbath, right? Mm-hmm. That there are shots in that movie that look identical to mm. shots in Sleepy Hollow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I this I guess what I was gonna say is you know I originally thought this was like him doing a, a Hammer horror movie. But he's really doing a Mario Bava movie, mm. right? right? I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, lots of decapitations. I mean, you know? and that's what it feels like just uh, aesthetically with yeah. the way everything. Because this, I mean, this was all, they looked around forever to find locations to shoot this. Upper New York, within the area of, of which this took place. Mm-hmm. Um, and they couldn't find anything that quite fit it. So they decided, hey, we're going to London mm-hmm. and we're going to shoot on a set. So this whole thing is shot on giant sets. Mm-hmm. And it gives you that feel to it because I think you can always or most of the time tell when you're on a set mm-hmm. in this big stuff like this because I can see it in this just the lighting hits a different way yeah. where you're just like it's not outside but I like how it looks because it mm-hmm. makes me feel like how I felt when I watched Black Sabbath Yeah, because there's different specific lighting that felt like set lighting that I liked from that yeah. movie yeah, even though you you're like it's this. outdoors but it's like right. it still feels well I mean there's overhead lighting yeah. in some shots and I'm like Unless they have a j- big giant light balloon up there, which I guess they could, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? It's like, know, that it's like real that's, close. Yeah, <laughs> they're in a in a stage somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I know 
that, um, you know, because I was really into Dracula, the Coppola one, when it came out, and he built, like, a I think forest. you're still really in. Right? I was into Dracula. <laughs> well, okay, so I, re- I, re- I guess I remember the stuff that, it, but he built, like, a forest for this chase scene at the mm-hmm. end of, of Dracula, mm-hmm. and it's like, I can pretty much see the scene where he's like, well, we did this on Dracula, Tim. Mm-hmm. You can build right. a right. big forest and do the chase like this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and yep. just truck the camera along and it'll work. Plus, it, like being in the contained space, you can do real fog and it just kind of gets held in place. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you, them. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to do the CGI fog that does too much, you yeah. know, moves yeah. too much, yeah. So and it, oh. But that also, you can cover up the seams of stuff if you can just blow mm-hmm. a bunch of fog yep. into it. So, yeah. Yep. And we were talking as we were watching this, uh, dear Brailler listener, please write in if you can explain this to us. Every movie nowadays is CGI and green screen on like a parking lot in Atlanta, right? Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, but it doesn't seem to be saving any money. No, it's more expensive. It seems, yeah. yeah so what's the benefit here? Yeah. Right. I, I'm not understanding. It's not saving money and it's not and it particular. Look good. It's not giving a better end result. Yeah. So because it's making the studio execs more money. Yeah. It, I was like, is it? Is this some sort of like money washing situation here? Right, like, oh, what is CGI point? costs this much and yeah. it doesn't really, you know. Well, how much does it take a modeler or a team of modelers to build a village in a computer versus craftsmen to go out, woodworkers to build it with materials in real life? You would think it would be cheaper yeah. to do it on the computer. Right, you would think. Doesn't but seem like it. Here we are. Then it's like, then it becomes a, well, why didn't you just go build it? Because yeah. every time it's built, it looks better. Looks Plus, sets better. get reused. It's not like they're one-time use. Yeah. Sets get yeah. torn down and, you know, rebuilt for different things all the yeah. time. And that's the f- that's kind of the fun of Hollywood and movies. Right. Because you can watch other movies and be like, I know where that's, I've seen that set before. Yeah. That yeah. was in this other movie. Yeah. And that familiarity you get with this stuff is just fucking gone. Watching yeah. this one, I was wondering if they used this in The Patriot. Yeah. Um, I it know. Wouldn't be surprised. Really fam- yeah. It looks I, very I, similar. I know that after this movie was done, they took everything down. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I don't know how long it was up. When was the Patriot? 2099? It was early, wasn't it? it yeah. I yeah. Like it could have been right so around there. It's that. possible yeah. they shot some stuff it in looks, there. It looks a lot like the Patriot mm-hmm. could village. Be. Could <laughs> yeah, because it looks like they spent a fortune on these oh, facades. I mean, we're saying, you know, that. The, a lot of the movie looks like it's indoors, but they they did build a, a village. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. uh, outdoors in some field in England. Yeah, you know, for at least the establishing shots. Oh, they, all that yeah, and near, it's like, near the Queen, because apparently her hunting party came by at one point while they were shooting off to the side. So it was oh, up geez. near in in that area. And then they had to dismantle it and build it again indoors yep. somewhere <laughs> so for the night scenes or <laughs> whatever. Really funny. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Um, okay, so, um, well, I guess, should we talk about the cast that we're talking so. about? That's so a lot. who all is in this movie? My God. We've got, uh, uh, Tim Burton staple, Johnny Depp. How many mm. movies have they done together? 52. I don't yeah, know. It sure uh, feels like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. What was the last one? Was it Dark Shadows? Probably, I think it was Dark Shadows. Okay. Uh, I mean, or Frank and Weenie. I'm sure you did a voice in Frank and Weenie uh, okay. at some point. Or, um, but a lot. Like those he was guys. the Weenie. Alice, I don't know if you guys yeah, know this. Yeah. He was the Weenie. Yeah, Alice in Wonderland. Oh, well, that, that oh, okay. was right before Dark Shadows. Oh, yeah. Oh, wasn't, he the, wasn't he the Mad Hatter? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. But those Ooh. guys like have had a working relationship since 19... For 30 years? Yeah. Something, right? Where Yeah. Mm. Um, who else is in it? We have Christina Ricci. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, I mean, like I said, Lisa Marie. Um, we have, uh, which I got to read the back. There's too many to. Mm-hmm. Well, of the Hammer, the Hammer crew, he's got Christopher Lee. Christopher yep. Lee comes in. He's uh, got Michael Goff. Uh, who would he, Alfred in, in Batman. Who came out of retirement mm-hmm. for this. Yeah, cool. but he'd been in Hammer movies. Right. Yeah. And then. We got um, Michael Gambon. We have two uh, Harry Potter oh, alumni here, yeah. Michael Gambon yeah. and Richard Griffiths. Yeah. Uh, yep. They're both in this. Yeah. Uh, Casper Van Dien. Yeah. And his hair. Every time that name pops up, I'm like, oh, that was a person. Like, I don't <laughs> I don't think of him unless he's I mean, directly in front of uh, me. Yeah, it's Starship <laughs> Troopers. <laughs> it did seem when Starship fun. Troopers came out and I saw that movie, I'm like, oh, this is probably like, you know, the new Hollywood dude who's going to be in a bunch of action movies. <laughs> nope. And it never happened. And I always wonder what those, like- Wait, he was in Alita Battle Angel? Yeah. He's not I the best either. actor. Was he doing a voice or something, maybe? He might he's just, be a, one of the bounty hunters. Holy crap, I can't even remember him being in He's just very, like, he's like a soap actor. Yeah, yes. yes. That's yeah. Exactly. Soap describe. actor yeah. energy. Yeah. So is it his range? They're just like, hey, he's not It's really not there. Probably. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey Jones, boo. We, yeah, uh, we don't talk about, about him. Talk about that. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ian McDermott. Ian McDermott. Yeah. Yeah, Palpatine himself. He's in I think that was actually... Wait, this came out the same year, right? As uh, the Phantom, Phantom Menace. Menace. I think that was ninety nine. 
That's oh, this. Is this this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's why Same Ian here. McDermott is suddenly back on the casting yep. lists, right? And so okay. then Ray Park, right, is in this movie. Right. right. He, of plays, course. He, he plays was, the horseman as the headless horseman. Yeah. He was Classic. Dark Maul in Phantom yeah. Menace. And, it, it, and and he was Toad in X Men that we did earlier this yes, right? year. The following yes. year. Yeah. 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 He was yeah. having his moment right yeah, now. Yeah, he was. Truly was. This is a good time for him. Yeah. yeah. Miranda Richardson is in it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and. Um, Martin Landau, uh, Martin Landau which I keep forgetting beginning. about, it, is in the movie right, for a scene. Doesn't say a word. <laughs> and we see Christopher Walken. And Christopher yeah, Walken. yes. And yes, Christopher Walken is in this movie. Yes, he is. Yeah. Um, true or false? I heard this of like Christopher Walken has been in movies since the 70s. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This was his first on screen kiss. I've heard that before. Is that true? Is it? I think he said it was. I think yeah, I remember that rumor. <laughs> or the, yeah. Hmm. Okay, well now I'm gonna have to think. I'm gonna think about wow. it for a couple days now. Want to kiss Christopher Walken? He, he, I think he was just in not I, the roles in the movies that got to kiss women is what it is. So. I think in the Dead Zone, uh, oh, he kisses. He kisses uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that, that's a romantic movie. I'm might pretty be, sure. So I think he was just. I think it was a joke. But he gotcha. did say that at one point about this, like, you know, I think uh, just he's got a face that's made for villainy, and he wasn't getting cast in <laughs> romantic roles. Yeah anymore um okay so how do the like you're bringing you're gonna do sleepy hollow yes uh so how do you make a feature film out of it from a screenwriting point of view what is your conceit who are the characters and what do they do you're making a mystery okay i suppose and you go who is the headless horseman who is the headless i mean yeah you kind of got to get into that um who he is uh, well that's in the story they have the head right, the story and, of the, and the hessian well the, yeah that's in there the hessian um and uh, why why he's taking heads i i suppose is the reason the you main gotta come up with a motive him. right a motive well, like why would he just as a you know he could just be a ghostly spirit going around killing people for fun mm-hmm. or you try and give him a reason as to why and so you just go from there it's like all right why would he want to do it uh and how did he end up headless to begin with and right. i don't know if holly knows this like is it the story in this like do we ever get a backstory in the other versions mm-hmm. of how he became headless is it close to this it's kind of close um they have the they have the horseman um the character of the horseman is the same it's a um a hessian a hessian yeah. soldier um, he came over during like the Revolutionary War. Well, yeah, he, he's uh, German uh, and came to f- and was sent yeah. over to help the British. Yeah, Hessian soldiers were like Brit- were German mercenaries that helped the British yeah. during the Revolutionary War. So that's the same. Um, okay. That's the the backstory of the character. In in this, obviously, the story is that he gets his head chopped off. Yes. In the in the book, it's just it gets taken off by a cannon. Oh right! Oh right! Yes, yeah, he right, does right, get. Yeah. yeah, he gets. Yeah. I like it's, that. It's a. It's a lot less like brutal. They, right. they make it a lot more dramatic in this. Okay. Which and, I think and, they do in the that Patriot. he's literally just looking for his head. Oh, oh right! It's just, yeah. it's just. It's just blown off in battle. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. And then he's looking for. It. It's like I got blown off, dude. Oh. <laughs> so he's just the ghost. So he, just he, 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 he returns. Area. He returns nightly looking for his head. Looking yeah. for his head. Yep. And if he can't find it, he gets angry and takes someone else's. Yeah. Yes. Back to the thing. Yes. Yeah. So, I love it. <laughs> um, so here we get a little more, uh, I guess. That still kind of fits in. He is looking for his head. I was Googling Christopher Walken's first. This is his first on-screen kiss. Is it? That is true. He doesn't oh, kiss shit. in the dead zone? Brooke Adams, isn't she in that? This is his first really? one. Yeah. That, that's Damn. shocking. And and uh, how disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> how it's disgusting. It is. Well, how, how does he look? Those nasty sharp teeth. Oh, he is. He he is. He, he has sawed his teeth down because this man loves uh, carnage. He, yeah, he is there for a purpose and is to kill and is to maim and it, I mean it's to win at that point. But he feels like a Lord of the Rings character, does he not? This feels like an evil like, guy that yeah. would be like yeah. leading the orcs and just fucking right. shit off. Yeah, play, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. That and everything. But like, like, yeah, it's like it, he was made for one thing and it was this. Yeah. And so I mean, he and he like they said, he sawed his teeth down to edges to to for his for his image basically to make him scarier in battle and everything, and it works. Yeah. Because he's fucking scary and he's Christopher Walken with his wide eyes and his black mm-hmm. hair and everything. <laughs> Um, the receding hairline is always scary, isn't it? It's always scary. He's got like the vampire <laughs> shape going too. I was like, Michaela, that's a sore subject. <laughs> 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 I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so Ichabod Crane in this one mm. is a New York City constable. Yes. Yeah. Who, uh, so what, what 
Because so if we're we going to have a mystery, we need someone to investigate. Right. And so we're in New York City for a little bit of this movie. We are indeed. Um, I love how British people or, or people with this accent say New York. <laughs> New York. New York. It just, it, just sound, it just makes it sound like I want to go there. Because <laughs> it was New, it was. Yes. New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's not York. It's the new one. Mm-hmm. New York, yeah. <laughs> um, so why is he sent to, uh, how do they determine, how do they choose him? to? He's to a go? pain in the ass up in New York. They don't like him <laughs> and his new scientific ways of trying to figure out um, uh, who murdered who and motives and what have you. They're, they want to stick with their old ways. Uh, what, what was the, who's the guy that got brought in? Um, who They're just like, death, go. Or they found a body and they're like, burn it. Yeah. Like, they, it's easy like when, when you find a body in the, the river, right. they drown. But, yeah, right. They're yeah. just, the, the cops aren't, they're just like, well, that's what it is. And he's like, yeah. there's other To be reasons. fair, how much science do they have? Like, I mean, how much do they, you know. break through with, but yes. Like, but I like that he's like, you know, uh, he's a, head, a man ahead of his time yeah. from yes. the future. And so he is know, a pain in the ass yeah. to the people stuck in the past yeah. as far as these techniques go. And so he is, uh, he is in court. Uh, uh, in front of the judge, played by Christopher Lee. Yeah. Who, I, th- I mean, if I ever came up against that judge in court, I'd ooh, ooh, I would, I would act. Tim Burton put Christopher Lee in like all of his movies up until I think Christopher Lee died. Right? Mm-hmm. He's because he's in Charlie. Charlie. He's, he's, yeah, dad he's in and Dark Shadows. Mm-hmm. He's okay. the the sailor Good for guy. Him. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's I, like in all of. He's in the Jabberwocky and Alice in Wonderland. Huh. Yeah, I think he. Yeah. I think Christopher Lee said that Tim Burton helped kind of revitalize his career a little bit because, like, I mean, after this uh, Attack of the Clones, he gets Count Dooku. Yeah. Um, like this gave him a a, a push. At a certain point, and kind of you know led to a lot more things for him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean he's in court in front of Christopher Lee, and Christopher Lee's like, "You will go to Sleepy Hollow," and he points his bony fucking long ass <laughs> finger at him, which I'm just like, "Ugh, scary." Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, "Now it's your turn to prove yourself. Go up to Sleepy Hollow, where there there have been murders, beheadings, l- heads lopped off." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like Johnny Depp's um, disgust face that he's like and he does that a lot throughout the movie he does a really good job of playing the like cringe like right like like the grossed out because in the in the book um he's just a very like superstitious jumpy kind of guy and i think johnny depp pulls that off very well in this very much so and he's a very he's almost literally a buttoned up person because he's got his collar it's all just like stuffy up to here Mm -hmm. with his costuming and everything but think about back in this time how jarring seeing someone beheaded would be, right? Right. Because like we of. see crazy violent stuff all the time because we yeah. have the access to the internet. You know, like we're probably desensitized on a level these people could never imagine. Right. You know, like Ooh. we've seen stuff in one scene of one movie that they haven't seen in a whole fucking lifetime. So yeah, <laughs> the fact that like this small village has had five people decapitated, big fucking deal. Like yeah. or yeah. on the other side, these are people that lived through war. And yeah. also true. they've yeah. taken in like injured so people. And cool right. So they've seen, right. yeah. they've seen stuff in person that we will never right. see. Right. right. That's very true. But they're, this is now they've uh, they've gathered it civilized, right? They're building a civilization right. post-war mm-hmm. and then this horrible... And now purposeful is, beheadings have happened. Yep. Mm-hmm. So um, we meet the, the townsfolk of Sleepy Hollow. Like we said, this is a triumph of production design, yes. I think, right? This whole place, uh, as far as the atmosphere and all that goes. Um, and all these interesting characters that are kind of gathered around Baltus Van Tassel, yes, mm-hmm. uh, who is the de facto mayor, basically, I guess. yes. And then you have the other characters, which is always like it seems like you have a judge, you have um, yeah. And by mayor, you just mean the richest man in the town. richest ba- man right, in town, yeah. Yeah. basically. Uh, doctor, uh, a notary. Um, Usually you have a cop or a sheriff or something, the but I guess that's the, uh, there, yeah, yeah, there you go. Is that what that means? For He's like the law. For the a, law, yeah. Law. He's like the judge. Yeah. For okay. the for a small sleepy a sleepy town like this <laughs> yeah. one, yes. So it's going to be like, okay, there's some kind of, you know, a conspiracy going on mm. here, right? I mean, that's how you have to kind of build the story up. Right. So then you're going to have to have red herrings and, you know, who. So, I mean, but this version of Ichabod Crane, I mean, how would you describe. How would you describe him? Johnny Depp. Yeah. Yeah, but Johnny Depp, <laughs> this is, I guess, why I like Johnny Depp. Like, he is one of those characters when you go back and look at his career, he likes to act. Yes. 100%. Until a certain point. I think he also hits a similar dip in the same way Tim Burton does. What was that movie he did with The Tourist? 
Yeah, oh, that was bad. Oh, or the the astronaut's wife. Those are like where he's playing oh. closest to Johnny. What was Depp? that one he did? It was like a comedy he did recently. What was oh, it called? The one the detective. Yeah, I think and so. Everyone fucking hated. Yeah, oh, it, it was, was really a Kevin bad. Smith movie. No, that wasn't. Oh, no, that, well, he was well, in Tusk, that, wasn't oh, he? Oh, that too. Oh, God, that was but, but horrible. Yeah. Malachi. Or, Mal- yeah, something uh, like that, right? Mordecai. 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 That uh, one. Oh, okay. there you yeah. go. We'll get to the one. That <laughs> one's, yeah. Mordecai. That's the one. The fucking, everyone was like, what the fuck is this? And that was like a Christmas Day release, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he does yeah. play the weird ass French Canadian detective in Tusk and also. Yoga hosers. And yoga hosers. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> He's made a lot of bad choices. He likes to ask. Yeah, yeah. If you can, so, that man can put on a mustache and an accent and a big nose, he's, he's like, but I guess that's his thing, right? Yeah. He's like, he's like, he's going to try and do something, you know, that's specific to this movie. Right. And you will see his acting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That doesn't detract and, and, from it most of the time. And I, I wonder, I wonder with Johnny Depp is if it's, if it's him or if it's Tim Burton, like if he, is, if he directing him to do the same character multiple times. I wonder well, if that they, has. You think they, he plays the same character mm. multiple times? Because he does. This carries over to outside of Tim Burton movies. You think though. so? Yeah, yeah I, I say, think so. Like, I think uh, they have. I think him and Tim Burton have the the wildest and funnest time doing yeah. it. Yeah, because yeah. they yeah. both like what he does. Yeah. yeah, and there's that working relationship. But yes, I, I I've seen it carry on outside of yeah. Tim Burton movies. Okay, and he mm-hmm. just likes that. The thing I guess is that like he's an uh, capital A actor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we're saying this is a horror movie, but to me, he's playing in a comedy. Like, yes, is he a is. Comedic he's, he's very funny in this movie, and it, it is the performance. It's not necessarily what he says or anything. It is the performance yeah, that yeah. is very yeah. funny because he's got these. He's very twitchy. He's nervous. Mm-hmm. He, he's seeing things that, even though this is his line of work, like even that bother him because he's seeing things outside of what he normally sees and everything. But yes, he's very. His initial reaction always to be like, Ugh. yeah, and then or, go into it, right, or pass out, right? <laughs> like, I mean, no, you go look, I'll <laughs> yeah. be right here. And the the costume designing or whatever the, the the there's that one scene where he's doing the uh, forensic examination mm. of the body, and he like <laughs> straps something on his head and lifts it up, and it's this set of you know like telescoping lenses yeah. and magnifying oh God, glasses that- as a headset, and you're yep. like. What in the whole? Like this is not serious. This is just being weird, right? It's almost like steampunk kind yeah. of technology, right, yeah. yeah. But, but man, the sound design whenever he's messing with little gadgets is so good. It really like is. when he pulls out his little like potions kit at the scene where they find the body and pulls out the little jars, like all the little sound effects of the tink tink tink, and like yeah, 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 and like um, it's just really well done. And even like yeah, when his glasses kind of extend, there's like a noise too that goes to it. Yeah, really adds to the movie. I don't know. I feel like I noticed that more this time than in previous watches mm-hmm. both the score I was really noticing and like yeah the sound I love yeah. the design. score, the score of this is movie. so good yeah. Daniel, it's really Daniel, good Elvin, of course but like I love that this movie isn't afraid to be like dramatic and theatrical and loud and like yeah, every, like truly, so much happens good. yeah yeah. but you yeah. want that from these moments right if this yes. is gonna be a headless dude swinging swords and axes and everything give him some moments yeah. in that mm-hmm. where you know things kind of swell up to a thing and then you know that moment happens and then you can deflate from it but go to something else it all works together right. very well mm-hmm. like you said the music and everything it's right. all very good yeah. I just don't know if a movie made nowadays would do something similar you know what I'm saying because yeah. like every time the horseman shows up it's like the score ramps up really quickly there's thunder there's lightning mm-hmm. there's like the wind kicking up there's leaves blowing like there's all this like dr- dr- pageant, drama, pageantry dramatic. to it yes. yeah, yeah exactly that I really appreciate I love so, it yeah. yeah that's very nice but Colin you are right uh, and uh, uh, about this of uh, him playing comedic, especially when he's autopsying things. But he gets squirted in the face with blood. Yeah, in Multiple certain times. ways. Yeah. <laughs> that is for comedy. Yeah, yeah. it is gross, mm-hmm. but it is for comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's very funny because you know. <laughs> but I think that's I think that's why it makes I think that's why this movie is so charming. Yeah, because uh, Tim Burton has that effect where he goes really dark. But he always balances it with comedy, like yeah. it, mm-hmm. all of his stuff. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be very bloody, but it's also going to be very funny. When yes, it's yeah. yeah. So in the he's face deflating with the, mm-hmm. the yeah. comedy with it's not really serious, folks. I mean, when the beheadings happen, it's a sword just goes and like yeah. slices heads right. up. Yeah. I mean, just like right. one like after the, the other. It's not like the sword gets stuck and he's got to. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's like not realistic at all. And you know, heads fall in between his legs and they get yeah. stabbed up and taken off. Yeah. So, yeah. Because if you, if you didn't have humor. these comedic moments, it would be a really dark movie. Oh right. my it god! Also, yeah. yeah, yeah. And also for an hour and forty-five minutes, you need that levity. You in do. There yeah. You need to, that balance. Otherwise, we're just gonna be like, woof. All right. Woof. Yeah. Well, um, I guess uh, the, uh, the other plot threads that are going on. 
uh, he meets uh, Cr- Katrina Van Tassel, yes. mm-hmm. and uh, she's dating uh, Casper Van Dien. Mm-hmm. But Brom. there's the the Brom whole Bons. idea that maybe that you know this is the the actual romance is between her and, and Ichabod. Um, Instant chemistry. Mm. The uh, there's also, but not actually because I don't know if you know this. Um, Johnny Depp had met Christina Ricci when he was dating Winona Ryder. Right. And they, they were on the set of the movie Mermaids. Christina Ricci was like six. I was going right. to say the age difference is a yeah. little... And old he, old he and so right. filming this movie, Johnny Depp was like thoroughly creeped out that he had to be love interest. <laughs> yeah. Christina Ricci. He's like 30, he was like, he's I've like known 35 her since she like movie, right? like, yeah. Yeah. How old was she in this? I'm not I, don't I, don't know. Know. I know he was like 35, I think. She's probably like 1920, yeah. I'm thinking. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he had known her since she was a little girl. 15 like year age gap yeah. it out. wow yeah um we do he ha- Ichabod Crane has a backstory in this movie which is kind of revealed through flashback dreams indeed which I guess explains why he's uh, a rational minded quote unquote um you know rational minded detective sure right was because of what um, because the murder of his mother is what it ends up being yeah by his father, who who did it for religious reasons, yeah, and that's when he lost. He mm-hmm. says he he lost his belief because it turns out in this yeah. one, like his mom. Most of this could go. I will say. This I, is, I was uh, gonna say I don't need this. I don't need subplot. this. Either. Most of this could go. You yeah. could do a little bit of it in a scene to explain some stuff, but right. most of it could go. But I'm also just like this is not this movie's fault. But I'm so tired of like dead parent being a shortcut in a story mm-hmm. to building character for somebody. I'm yeah. so mm-hmm. fucking tired of seeing that. Like, yeah, ugh, I think that's how it. it it affected me. I'm like, oh, yeah. here we go. I mean, when you have, okay, a guy, you go like, okay, this is a rational minded guy mm. versus the supernatural. Like, that's all you really need. But exactly. they have to go right. and go like, no, his mom was actually a witch. And you're like, wait, Who what? Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, so lot. he has a personal connection to the supernatural that need, he didn't remember he before. Because how does that, all we get out of that is, I guess, that it, in you know, he lost his faith at seven. Right. And then became like, right. okay, I'm going to go. And then go. it goes from there. Yeah. In the science, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, detect- detection and all that. Yep. Don't need it. Could be gone. Uh, yeah. So you could mm-hmm. take all that out, but it's, uh, that gives Lisa Marie uh, a, a point to be in the movie. Right. Um, and there's a, there's the Mario Bava ish, uh, Iron Maiden gets uh, to yeah. show up yeah. at mm-hmm. this point. For no reason. Um, <laughs> So, okay, so uh, people are being killed. Yes. Uh, and what does Ichabod suspect? People are being killed. Secrets are kind of being revealed a little bit. People get him little bits of information, what have you. He thinks, first of all, he thinks he's like, this was uh, uh, no horseman. This was uh, murder for uh, some reason. And I will find the flesh and blood person who did it. And he is slowly convinced otherwise. Mm-hmm. Because, he, I mean, pretty. Oh, God. Well, he he always maintains that there's some there's something logical behind it, right? Mm-hmm. Even when he's when there's more like proof that the horseman is real, yes, he's still convinced that there is some sort of tangible reason this is happening. Yes, yeah. there's a flesh and blood killer, and yeah. I will unmask him. Yes, um, there's a conspiracy. Is that the other thing? I guess like for a comedy bit, right? Like he is always wrong <laughs> in his deducing, pretty much. He's learning. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, I think in every single case in this, it's like he's wrong until somebody like comes out and flat out tells him (laughs) what the solution is. Mm -hmm. There's five bodies in four graves, you know? Right. (laughs) Right. Which, yeah, you'd have to have some. Because no way you just, I guess he wouldn't have deduced unless somebody would have told him. Because, I mean, yeah, he didn't go there to dig up bodies. Yeah. But he does. So there should be more people covering their faces in this movie as far as I'm concerned. But maybe the smell is just like permeating the entire town anyway. And your nose blind to it because it always smells like, that yeah, way. A dead body. Yeah. Have you seen where we live? Yeah. Of the Seriously. Death? Yeah. yeah. Right. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no um, one's showering there. Mm. There is a scene where because um, I think, you know, Casper Van Dien is kind of uh, uh, indignant that mm. his girl is making eyes at the new guy in town. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they do stage the scene from the, the story. They do. Yeah. In the in the story, most of the story is Brom like pulling pranks on okay. Ichabod. That's most of the story. Um because Ichabod is very superstitious. So he's very like jumpy. Yeah. Doesn't Brom um, tell him the story of the headless horseman? Brom tells story? him the story and yeah in 
yeah, one of the one of the pranks. And again, it's up to interpretation. The end of the story, um, it could be the headless horseman actually showed up, or it could be that it was just a prank by Brahma all along. Right. They never say, but okay. we do see the prank in the movie. Yeah, we yeah, do, yeah we do indeed. Ichabod is chased by a headless horseman across a bridge, and uh, the, with a the, flaming pumpkin. Yep, it's mm-hmm. thrown at him. Boom. But it turns out it's Brom. I didn't know what the point of the scene was, honestly, because uh, it, it doesn't have. I think, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or yeah, because it doesn't have any kind of effect. Like it no. doesn't dissuade Ichabod from seeing Katrina or being in the town. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, okay, somebody rode around and you know scared him. What a bold there. move, too, dude! You're gonna run around as the town serial right? killer. Someone's going to shoot you. You're gonna Seriously. get Ben Tramer to shit uh, if yeah. you don't. If <laughs> you're not very, careful, especially because in this yeah. movie, he's very a true. cop. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, very true. <laughs> probably has the well, power he's, he's to an, arrest yeah. you. He's an yeah. investigator. Okay, yeah. not a cop. A constable. Constable. But this oh, this I, town feels very shoot first, ask questions later. It really. Right. So it's to to, to ride up. around as the town serial killer is a bold move. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Yeah. But if um well, I mean, I mean yes, that's yeah, very true. <laughs> Well, it does take 10 minutes to reload after they shoot one off. So you, so you do buy yourself some time. But this is what happens yeah. in the Are You Afraid of the Dark episode, right? Do you remember this? Because yes. it, it is the pranks thing going on. And then there's a lot of a guy riding around with the, you know, the shoulders on making uh-huh. him look headless. And then the Headless Horseman does show, does up, show up in that one. Correct. I think it's a pumpkin throw and everything. That's where the Bridge of Souls comes in. Uh-huh. The bridge the Headless Horseman cannot pass, mm-hmm. which I think happens in the show. He, dry, he, he crosses it and then disappears. And yep. I think it's over, but then... You know, it's not because it's already for the dark and it's, never it's kids Twilight Zone. So well, speaking of television, <laughs> I, I know so this much. is a little bit of a sidebar, but has anyone seen the Fox uh, Sleepy Hollow television show? No. no. Oh, shit. I forgot that I, was a thing. I forgot for that. For a couple of years. What are you talking that? about? It was, because Ichabod Crane is like. He's a police. It's basically Bones, past. but. Yeah. Oh, is it really? <laughs> yeah. Right. I forgot about he that. He gets I saw resurrected an, in, the pa- in the I saw present. a couple episodes of it uh, yeah. a long time ago. But yeah, I remember I that. The first Was that Len Wiseman di- directed the first, the pilot, and like right. oversaw the creation and development I of that? So. The very well might have been. I watched the first couple episodes because it was basically like, you know, he had. Yeah, Ichabod comes back. There is a headless horse. I don't man. recognize any names. It <laughs> <laughs> was what it Len Wiseman though? 2013. Yeah, oh, wow. and it ran for like three or four seasons. Wow. It yeah, it ran for a little bit. Yeah, wow. I, I don't yeah. recognize. Oh, Nikki Reed from Twilight. That's the first name I noticed. Is she Katrina? So, no, no, oh. she's way down the list. Yeah. So what? No, was, was it? this guy like you know Ichabod is resurrected? I can't remember Tom why. My son. It, yeah. yeah. It turns and into he a crime partners of the week. up with this like modern police woman, and they have to. So it's fish out of water, right? And There's he is the dressed whole, as Ichabod yeah, Crane. The, he's like yeah. long hair and a ponytail. He's yeah. like the, so the, it's the fish out of water. Like does he time travel? Yes. Yeah. This yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's supernatural oh, element yeah. to it and everything. Len Weissman no. directed one episode. The first, yeah. yeah it's kind of like, oh, do they have oh. to like fake it? Like, oh, he's just from a different area. Yes. And dress it. So it's like loose, that Lucifer yes. thing. Yeah, where yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. Well, the poster's really bad. I think this will set the tone for what you should expect for the show. Oh, um, no. It looks very CW, yeah. does like, it that's not? That's like season four, though. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, so this is what it works up to? That's what it works up to. Well, that's even worse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Evil takes hold. I can hold. see why you forgot about it. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. I also forgot about it. Um, yes. So, it, you know, obviously the story continues to uh, permeate. So there, there is a conspiracy taking place here. Well, there's also, um, I guess, going with the kind of the, the Mario Bava Hammer Films atmosphere, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a witch who lives in the woods. There is. Um, mm-hmm, indeed. And there's a sequence where she, he goes to her, Ichabod goes to her to find like, he becomes convinced there is a, a real headless horseman, mm-hmm. I guess, because the headless horseman rides up and kills a guy right in front of him. Right. right. So then he's like, it's all true. There is a headless horseman. And then he's like, okay. <laughs> that I'm scene gonna... was very funny. He was in the bed covering his yeah. face. Like, yeah. It's a horseman. <laughs> headless. It's true. Yeah, but I like his I like his reactions to him. He's like, I know we told you, everyone told you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've been saying. So he then uh, resolves, right? Instead of being the scaredy cat that he actually is, right. fleeing back to the city, he's going to deduce who the horseman is controlled by. Correct. Because he says that's what's actually going on. It's still a, an assassin, mm-hmm. right? But it's controlled by some human, and there is a plot, a motivation behind it. Mm-hmm. And he fi- um, he finds this out from the witch. 
Uh, well, no, from the witch, he finds out where the headless horseman's body is. Okay. Yeah. That's what he's yeah. looking for. And then he. Because she turns into the. I was going to say, I remember this scene when this movie first came out, and this was terrifying. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That her eyes bug out of her like head. Like Large Marge and Pee Wee's yeah. Playhouse. Yeah. yeah. And then she ends up looking like the, the, the little short demon priest from Beetlejuice. Yeah. yeah. Do you, Beetle? He's like with the eyes. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. They're, they're related. They're distant mm-hmm. cousins. I kind of wish they didn't do the jump out eye. Yeah. Because that's wish very cartoony. It, right. I wish they'd just gone like no eyes black. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. have the mask yeah. that they had because that's creepy as hell. Right. But. Yeah. But I think they were just like, let's try something here. So the witch in the woods says, you know, go to find this demon tree. And they do. And there's a big tree that was part of all the uh, advertising of this movie. Mm -hmm. And that is a gate. That's basically a tree that grew on the spot where the headless horseman was buried. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His sword so is still like on a, the ground. It's like a tree that birthed from evil. Yeah. 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 Straight from his heart. Yeah. It grew. And Ichabod deduces that the tree is a gateway between worlds. And luckily, as he's standing there, the headless horseman is birthed. Birth right. arrives, bursts through the tree. Mm-hmm. He does find where all the, the heads, heads are stored. Right. Yeah, yes. Yes. this is another blood squirting in the face moment. Yeah, where he chops his way into it. <laughs> this part's gross. It when is he's like gross. chopping at the tree roots, Very. and it's all bloody. It's yeah. gross. And the way all the heads fall down when he oh, opens it is yeah. really gross. The heads yeah. look good. Yeah, they, they do. Good. They look real good. I guess there was Money a part respect. in the movie where it kind of felt to me that the movie, like, it didn't end, but. The, the it culminates in a scene at the church. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, where the horseman is summoned and rides around. We get to see the horseman a lot in this movie. A I mean, lot. Up close, like, he's doing is, a lot of action. Yeah, there's no kind of no question about the horseman. It's like he is a featured character. Yeah. I'm and glad. That, yeah, I, I like. I it. like it. Uh, yeah, I like that the mystery is something else. Not is it real or not? Mm-hmm. Is it somebody else? Yeah. I like that. No, he's real, but something else is happening. Yeah, so yeah. it is nice to have. So him we get to mm-hmm. look at this. This Plus, guy, which yeah. is, it's a good headless effect. It's good great. headless. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect. Effect. It's, mm-hmm. yeah, because it's, this is one of the first times they've ever actually been able to have a headless horseman and just digitally erase mm-hmm. the head and not have the high shoulders on an actual right. dude running around mm-hmm. with swords and shit. Makes it look much better, much yeah. more believable as, looks as good. a character. And he's just, he's just a fucking cool dude. He's got an axe in one, mm-hmm. a hatchet in one hand mm-hmm. and a sword in the other, and he's just going to town. And he yeah. does like the cross thing and, yeah. Yeah. And, but, Cuts, uh, what's his face? Cassandra in, in half. half. Oh, it's yeah, great. He's a good character. I like him. Plus, <laughs> yeah. he gets good music and good moments yes. in this. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah uh, it's a good character. He twirls that sword. He does. Oh, I love when he twirls the sword. It's <laughs> so great. I like that they light him. Remember the so man that... who was twirling double sided lightsabers all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, seriously. I love it. Um, I like that they light him so that his leather coat almost like reflects light. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. the way he's lit is like he's it goes into the divots and creases of the leather so that he's well lit and you could still see him. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's a cool look. Yeah, it's very a cool cape? look. It's yeah. Very it's cool. Got a cool mm-hmm. tattered cape. Yeah. And everything, of course, because there's, there's cool. got to be a McFarlane toy. Right. Uh, right. 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 Somewhere. Kind of have it on the wall. Right. Action figure model. What do we call it? A toy. Okay. It's, I also uh, like his, I like his relationship with his horse. They are he ride or die horse. for each yeah, other. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Horse. yeah. Like the Did horse they give the horse a name at the beginning and I missed it? I don't think there is. I think it is. Well, there was a name. I think Baltus did say the horse in the name but mm-hmm. I, I missed it i just remember johnny depp's horse's name is gunpowder right yeah. mm-hmm. johnny depp uh bought that horse after this movie was over because they were gonna put it down oh no he's like oh i will take that horse it's bleak there you go. And that's yeah. what it. it's like what was that <laughs> horse name? Okay. Stop it. i don't know where <laughs> <laughs> jesus <laughs> So there is a conspiracy, it turns out. Uh, uh, he begins to suspect um, Baltus Van Tassel. There's the whole uh, Martin Landau was uh, Van Garrett, another landowner, mm-hmm. and somehow like all this land is being transferred into the possession of the Van Tassels. And so Baltus seems like the most likely suspect. This ends, uh, this uh, end, plot ends at a church yeah. there's a big standoff where the horseman appears he in front of the entire it. town okay this so, gets a little silly that's another kevin andrew kevin walker thing putting the Him. wolf man in like in downtown london he puts the horseman right. in front of everybody everybody yeah, sees boy, this the real. pacing back and forth in front of the gate getting shot like the, the 40 whole, times like it goes shot, on for a little too for long. a long time yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. it's like again. okay this is we could guys cut down come on we're spinning our wheels here yeah fishing lines uh baltus yeah and pulls him out which is a, cool yeah it's cool, cool. grabs it's a, very a, cool. one of the fence thick fence posts ties a rope around it and just whoosh. yeah but the other, then his head him. just gets through the fence over the line and that's all yeah, he that's needs all he to need. cut him yeah. off it's so good it's, it's so good yeah and the other dudes kill each other yep so yep. then you're like oh yeah 
all the conspirators, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. turn against each other. It's like they, they, they reveal those seconds. We should, we must repent. Mm-hmm. And then they, and then yeah, one shoots one, one, one gets brains the, the other. Cross, yeah, and it's like okay, so all our suspects are gone. I guess there is the lingering idea that there's still, you know, uh, more to the mystery, mm-hmm. right. right? Because we've also seen Christina Ricci has been. Uh, I mean, she has a spell book. Basically, she's been casting spells. She's been writing runes. Mm-hmm. Also a witch. Also mm-hmm. a witch. Just like. Uh, so like his her mom. mother witch? Mm-hmm. Yeah, her mother was a witch. Her mom, his mom. Uh, his everyone, mom was a Everyone's witch. mom, right. So, of course, his name is Daredevil. Then you're like, okay, so where does <laughs> the way. movie go? Uh, Ichabod is like, okay, I'm going back to New York. Well, well how, what is well, he... Because at this point, he suspects that it's Katrina. Yes, mm-hmm. and, and may have been possessed. And oh. I, he can't handle that it's her, so he's yeah. just out. Yeah. He's gone. And she's, I mean... Uh, depressed as well that he's leaving and this whole situation is well yeah i mean her dad died <laughs> the whole and town's she, dead right, and, then, and she burned evidence because she's like it's uh, my father you can't he didn't do it yeah and she says i curse the day that you ever came to this town we're like oh this romance never gonna get off the, oh, no. the ground because i don't think they ever got a chance to smooch well she it kisses him the first time there. she meets him mm. oh that's right yeah. that's true on the cheek yeah the other character is uh they have uh the um the son of uh the van garrett uh manservant yeah. Masbeth, right his yeah, kid yeah. is t- tagging along so it's like basically it's the three yes. uh mm-hmm. ichabod katrina and young Masbeth. young, young, young Masbeth. Yep, that's it mm-hmm. um trying to solve this mystery yep. and so what brings so he um on his way out of town uh, he oh because the mother i think has been maybe killed so we think everybody's dead but then he's like uh oh, she's probably not dead you know unearths her body and there's a cut in, on her hand but he's yeah, like that's was- somebody else and i'm like wow this is a leap of logic that you got here but okay yeah what made him turn around because he saw the body as he was leaving, but he wouldn't have been able to see anything. From and then he re- all of a sudden opened oh. the spell book that Katrina had given him and oh, got right, to the. Right, yeah, right. it was because a protection spells, spell under spells his bed. she was casting. She thought was uh, were um, it's against the evil, him. It's the evil eye, but he right. d- he doesn't know magic well enough to know that the evil eye is actually a protection spell. Yes, and he realizes that Christina Ricci was yeah. putting down protection spells, and he for saw him the and hand of the the body he that did. was supposed to be the stepmom yeah but he realized that it wasn't what, clotting yeah wouldn't have it yeah. just been a better shorthand no pun intended but wouldn't have been <laughs> had to not have a cut on the hand and he sees it as he's leaving and, and be like oh be that's not her back. um particularly but i guess it doesn't matter it doesn't matter i just I know, like when was, he goes into the thing and just rips just, the tops off coffins it was right. cool it's just it's really plot heavy at this point it, it, like yeah, it's yeah. doing there's a lot calisthenics to just we're just moving and you're like does this make any sense but whatever who did what the revelations of who was with uh uh, who was with who at the end of it flashbacks it's like i don't know what's happening but i don't care i'm with it there's a scene (laughs) where he goes into the woods and he sees the evil stepmother uh uh in flagrante delicto no she's uh, in a compromising position with uh, somebody who we don't mm-hmm. know at the yep. time who it is, yeah. but and during that we don't scene, speak del- delectable mm-hmm. f- frequency, yeah. <laughs> she cuts her hand and rubs blood on his back, and oh. then uh, like what? Like he, that's weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, no, him grabbing it and then licking it was the weird part mm-hmm. in the later flashback. But he <laughs> see, he witnesses this, and then he's like embarrassed to confront her about it. When even you're like. Okay, she's clearly marking this guy as right. a target because, you know, he's going to die by the horseman. I guess he never does. No. Technically. Yeah. Um, I was also sitting there going, like, does she mark every victim with blood on, on them? And then I was like, that couldn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't sure if that was just a whole show. To I think like, it was just a show. So he really would do. identify mm-hmm. the wrong body. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they go. Yeah, because she confronts him. She's like, I know you saw me. Yeah. So yeah. who is the in evil the stepmother? Uh, the, well, the evil stepmother. Uh, uh, What's her plot plan? To slowly eliminate anybody so she can inherit basically the wealth of the town at this point. Mm-hmm. Like she, you know, she the ends town up. town turned on her when she was a child. Yes. And, and so her mother was suspected of witchcraft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she was banished because it turns out she actually was a witch. Uh, but had twin daughters. Right, yeah. They encountered the horseman. Yeah, oh yeah, she was the one of the two girls who encountered the horseman in the woods. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, she sold her soul to the devil and got the horseman For revenge. For revenge. Right. Although her sister lived in the... the her sister is her sis- the witch. Her sister's the witch in the, in the, in the cave. Yeah. 
Which did I her re- sister just go nuts? I think it's funny that it she's just, the one it... that sold her soul to the devil, not the witch sister. Right. right. Mm. She didn't do that. I mean, she I like may have it. done it later. She didn't. I don't Leave her know. alone. She got possessed. Leave her alone. <laughs> yeah. She's been through okay. a lot. Okay. So she kills her sister, and then she reveals this plot to uh, Christina, or Katrina. Yeah, or Katrina, right? Because, uh, I mean, all villains have to. I mean, she has to explain she what the hell the plot yeah, is, because otherwise we'd be like, what? Yeah. Why yep. are you doing this? Let me tell you all the reasons. She's I'm like, all right, this. sit down. Yeah, because this is going to take. <laughs> As I am summoning the horseman right now to come and take your head. This is all. Why. Yeah, this is all a bit too complicated and too much. I think that we needed for this movie, and you know, and it kind of it really extends the ending of this movie. Well, we get like we get a whole other action, action and chase scenes. scenes. There's a going on. chase scene that takes place through. Wait, did that happen before the the mill? No, the mill happened first. Yeah, there's a bigger. Right. Uh, uh, sorry, a windmill. Um, yep. Creepy Tim Burton. How windmill. often do you see a windmill in a movie? Huh? Know, and it's it, a what big windmill, right? Yeah, it was like a Don Quixote. Yeah. It's not usually right. in there. It's a Frankenstein wind- right. windmill. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he did that in Vincent, right? Uh, and uh, Frankenweenie. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, which catches on fire, explodes. There's mm-hmm. a whole dramatic action scene that takes place there, and then uh, chase on a, on a uh, uh, horse-drawn carriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right with the horseman. Chase, yeah. And the horseman's which, uh, following after him. Johnny Demp's uh, jumping back and forth from the carriage. Which this to- this is this is the chase scene to emulate from from the book. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And uh, I did think uh, Tim Burton. If you look at like the action, quote unquote, in the Batman movies versus this, this is better. So it's like he's progressing as an action. Mm-hmm. Oh, action yeah, just, replace the, just replace the character with the Batmobile. It's basically the same. Thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, those movies, I always thought they were billed as action movies, but then you watch them and you're like, they're not really like action yeah, compared wouldn't. to like, you know. He does work up to it yeah. as he goes along because mm-hmm. I think, yeah, part two is, is far more action or Batman Returns, I mean, than the first one. But mm-hmm. yeah, he works his way up. So the uh, movie climaxes back at the tree. Basically, they lead the horsemen back to the hell tree. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Um, and what is their plan here? What? How are we going to defeat the horsemen? We got to get, get that head back. Get the head. The skull. The skull. Yep. Which uh, evil stepmother has in mm-hmm. her possession. That's how she's able to order the horsemen. What's around. her name? Who are we talking about? The evil stepmother. What's her name? Uh, I ask because I figure you don't know. Because well, I, don't, I also don't know. No or, idea. This is why Family I name was other. Archer. I remember yeah. she was the right. Archers. Then right, she was right. a Van Tassel. She married in. It's Miranda Richardson. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do they ever call her anything besides just <laughs> the lady, lady of the lady house? Van yeah. I think she's just Lady Van Tassel. Lady, lady, lady Van Tassel. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, in the rousing finale, um, there's a big fight over the skull. All right. Yeah. And Ichabod gets a hold of it and is able to throw it back to the horseman. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? He catches it. Uh, <laughs> he does. He catches it. And, and we get a reenactment of Hollow Man. Well, uh, uh, or a portion of it because he puts mm-hmm. the skull back on his, yeah. on his neck. I, when I first saw this, I thought it was so cool. It is. I so like really it. Cool. I still it's like cool. it. Yeah, I still I like, like it. That, that he puts it back on. I and still it like back it. And All the veins and muscles yeah. start like repairing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, cool. it, yeah, it's a uh, it's a little um uh, a little um, what's the fucking superhero with the skull on fire? No. Ghost, oh, Rider. ghost Rider. It's a little yeah. Ghost Rider there yeah. for a for a yeah. second, and you're just like, and I'm talking about like the look of it. Because it's not, it's still 1999. The effects aren't the best, mm-hmm. so it's still a little bit of that. Well, but then cartoony. eventually, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But it's a, but it fits within what we're looking at mm-hmm. here, the aesthetic of this whole movie. Yeah. But yeah, and then everything grows back. And Christopher Walken reappears in the movie, mm-hmm. and he gets his first kiss. Yeah, by basically biting. It's a bite kiss, right. a bitey kiss, yeah. a bloody yeah. bitey, kiss. a bloody bitey kiss. He's got sharp teeth. He yeah, does. And he takes evil stepmother. Even with his like to hell. face and grunting, he's still very Christopher Walken. Very Christopher mm-hmm. Walken. <laughs> yeah, well, he gets his. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's not just like hey. hey. It's Christopher Walken moments. Yeah. Um. All right. So that defeats the horseman. Uh, the town is now saved. He Everybody's gets basically back. dead. He can, but yeah, he can he rest in peace. Her. He, he dives back into the tree with yeah. his like, bride. <laughs> yeah, with his bride, his hell bride at this point, and he's like, I'm done. So Until the next time. Yeah. And uh, our heroes return to New York. So now it's a instant family. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Johnny Depp uh, 
the cranes and their ward. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. And yep. they're they're and it's and uh, young ward, and he would go on to become better. Just in time for a new century. I know that's the other thing yep. I forgot until I watched it. I'm like, oh yeah, it came out in '99 and Y2K yep. and the, the uh, millennium. So it starts up uh, here. We yeah. are on the cusp of a new millennium, and yeah. at the end they arrive like at Christmas time or something mm-hmm. in New York right before. Yep. It uh, becomes seven or eighteen hundred, mm-hmm. I guess. Right? Yeah, yeah. There it is. Sleepy All right, Hall. Sleepy Hollow. Mm-hmm. Well, now I guess Hall. we'll go around the table and tell you individually what we thought of this movie. Uh, twenty twenty five years on. Twenty five years on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Wow. Man, uh, try that. Well, never mind. They've made TV shows and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. They know. We have just forgotten about them. Um, but first, before we do that, we are going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I kind of wish... That you'd have that in an envelope sealed with wax. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Let's bring back the earth yeah. form, yeah. yeah. And we need to bring that back. Yeah, it's like, so right? cool. The, and uh, everyone, should have, ring, ring. everyone should have rings yeah. that yeah, press into the, it to do the, it. Yeah. The family yeah. all, crest. Yes, we should yeah. all have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got to bring that back. Yeah. Um, well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can get a hold of us to participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Sleepy Hollow Millitime writes in and says, this ad- adaptation isn't terrible. You can definitely feel the Tim Burton vibe. I remember yeah. an old 80s TV movie that introduced me to Jeff Goldblum, Meg Foster, and Sleepy oh. Hollow. Ah. Cool. Goldblum was there? Ichabod. Oh. Dick Buttkiss was Brom Bones. And what? Meg Foster was Katrina, and it's on YouTube. All right. What? I'm going to go find that. <laughs> I've seen Dick it. I just Buttis. don't wow. remember Dick it. Buck. Just because I think Jeff Goldblum was probably a good casting for Ichabod yeah. in that in that twitchy yeah. school teacher type well, of way. Well, you cast him because you've seen the Disney yeah. cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like right. This is what Ichabod is. Right. Uh, Kryptonian <laughs> Orphan says, Burton has a tendency to trade in his love interest in the movies he directs from film to film. Yep. Lisa Marie to Hella Bonham Carter to Monica Bellucci. I can certainly understand why from his perspective, and I'm sure he has a lot to offer, but let's just say he's been a lucky dude. Mm-hmm. He likes his muses. Uh, Chili Morrison said, it's not a perfect film, but very enjoyable for what it is. Excellent cast of old distinguished actors. Yep. Um... I may get crucified for this, but I really don't like Walken's horseman. He's too cartoony and the hair is ridiculous. A more intimidating horseman could have moved this movie up, in my opinion. Did you see those teeth? <laughs> I mean, the hair is ridiculous, you know. That's why. I, I mean, it is walking. Yeah. It is walking. Uh, Sean Ford says, my friends and I have conversations about who would be the next Freddy Krueger. Many of them think Kevin Bacon should get a shot. But after watching Johnny Depp in Sleepy Hollow and many other roles, I believe he's the better choice. To play the next Freddy, what do you think? And what is your favorite Sleepy Hollow? Is it this one or Disney's Legend of Sleepy Hollow? Well, I guess you're gonna have to wait to the end of the show to find that out. I think Johnny Depp would give it his all as Freddy Krueger. I'll tell you what. Mm. As far, you know that. Acting. I just don't like the. He's already in the Nightmare on Elm Street universe. Yeah. I don't oh, like true. him crossing uh, the streams yeah. that way. True. Yeah. True, 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 he's in true. two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess so. I don't. Yeah, I don't. We, we'll find. Well, no, we'll never find someone. What am I saying? <laughs> it's not a problem. We have to worry about. You know. No. Uh, Michael Whitaker says the actual legend of Sleepy Hollow is one of my favorite Halloween stories, and so I'm always down for any interpretation of it. That being said, I always sort of thought the Ichabod Crane police officer was a weird leap from Ichabod Crane school teacher, and I think the movie would have just been or been just as good if they would have kept the original concept. It would have. I mean, it, it would be. It would be a very different movie, and I don't see that as a Tim Burton movie. Yeah. Mm. Right. Richard Crotzer says, "Pure genius to take someone with Christopher Walken's cadences and inflections and give him no lines." <laughs> it, right. Yeah, oh right. my God. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's, That's great. Uh, Jacob Laws says, "One of my favorite Tim Burton movies. So fun and perfectly grotesque. It has the best mm-hmm. Burton traits, but in an R-rated form. Mm-hmm. I can't beat a movie that has Supreme Chancellor Palpatine." Albus Dumbledore, Alfred Pennyworth, 
Uncle Vernon Dursley, Johnny Rico, Count Dooku, Wednesday Adams, and Edward Scissorhands, along with a cameo from Max Zorin. There you yeah. Go. Uh, you got them all. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> and then let's slowly kill them off all. one by yeah. one. Uh, two weeks ago, we watched Texas Chainsaw 3D, <laughs> and Travis Legler says, the more I think about it, the do your thing, cuz line sounds like it was written for a really piss poor parody of a texas chainsaw movie or a porno version of one and both scenarios still make you cringe Mm -hmm. when you hear it yeah it's yeah you when you said porn parody of texas uh, uh, i'm sure it exists probably i'm sure but okay so how does uh, (laughs) right how does the chainsaw get used in that we're moving on moving on just dildos just Uh, Sean, do some research for us and report back. How about that? All right, fine. Ruin your Why this is my assignment, but I'll I'll take it on. Because you're the one curious about it. it You know why this is your assignment. I'll take it on. (laughs) Well, (laughs) thank you, everyone, for writing in. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I'll give you a report next week. (laughs) And now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Sleepy Hollow, starting with... I think we must start with Holly. (gasps) Me! What'd you think about Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, 25 years on... I still love it. I still love this movie. It is one of my, it's my favorite Tim Burton movie. It's one of my favorite Halloween movies. Mm -hmm. I think it's like perfect Halloween vibes. Um, I, I know that there's issues with the movie, but I'm kind of blind to them because I love it so much. Like I still enjoy every second of it. Um, I think the, the set pieces are, are amazing. I think it does a great job with telling the story and selling the story differently um, because it is quite different from the original Washington Irving story. Um, but I'm okay with it. I think this works for this movie. Um, I think the gore is amazing. The effects are so fun. I like the balance of comedy and horror. Um, yeah, I love this movie. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, so I, I could sit here and gush about it, but I'm not going to, um, Cause I'm not going to say anything bad about it. Cause I love it so much. Yeah. You gush in private. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. I love this movie. I think you should watch it and you should watch it in, um, right now combination with the Disney one. Cause mm-hmm. it's just fun. And right? I'm going to like watch-, watch the Disney one before this. Yeah, and that's what I do. I watch yeah. the Disney one and then I watch this yeah. and it's just fun. Although tonight I'm going to go home and watch it. Cause I just feel like shaky right now. I need to watch it. <laughs> Colin. She watched I, them out I of order it. and now she's, she's like, I know ah. I have got the DDs. I, so I recommend it. Colin, what did you think? Uh, I feel very similar to how you feel about this movie. It's, I recognize, you know, critically, you know, if you're looking at it, it's like it has problems. Uh, it's designed to just move as fast as it can. So you can't think about them. But what I like about it is it is, you know, it has this like suffocating, uh, Halloween vibe, you know. There's uh, Tim Burton um, uh, scarecrows. Yeah, you, you know, know. You know what it is about it. This movie sucks you into its world. Yeah, it's you know? uh, yeah. I it's love a, that. it's. I love that about it. I guess I love the the atmosphere, the production design, the costume design. I like the performances. Um, you know, I was trying to think. Like, you know, you said it's your favorite Tim Burton movie. I think this is the only. Well, no, I own Dark Shadows also. So I like gothic horror. Well, yeah. Those are the two things. And I have a couple of the Batman movies, I guess. Yeah, but right. I was like, is is the, my favorite Tim Burton movie maybe like Ed Wood? Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Maybe that's, I would say that's a better movie. But this might be my favorite mm-hmm. Tim Burton movie. This is the one that you break out when Halloween rolls around. Oh, yeah. Um, I enjoyed it then. I enjoy it now. It's, uh, you know, mostly a comedy. I don't think it's a horror movie at all. It's not scary at all. I guess it's gory. It's yeah. violent. That's why, you know, you got to keep your kids away from it, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, it's it's too gory for, like, probably younger kids to see. And there's a lot of beheadings. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Just yeah. Kind of, and heads, you know, disembodied heads mm-hmm. and stuff like oh, that. Oh, this movie would so traumatize me as a child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a ghoulish movie with a Tim Burton, it, macabre, I guess is what you're saying. Then, mm-hmm. uh, But it has a lightness to it that, you know, um, I enjoyed it. I, I still like mm-hmm. Sleepy Hollow. I mean, for big budget gothic horror movies, there's like this and the Wolfman in the yeah. last uh, like 25 years. Crimson, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crimson Peak. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. That was yeah. a good guy. I've never course. seen it, but yeah, I, you know, yeah but that's okay. the one that always gets brought up. And once you, know, you, you guys seem to love it. Once you get over the fact that it's not a horror it's movie, it's right. a gothic yeah, romance. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's enjoyable. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't expect that one to be scary. Either, no, it's but. not. Yeah, no, that seems like a, a, a haunted romance. Yeah, but mm-hmm. that's, I guess, the thing that I, I, I guess I was leading with. It's like, that's why Burton and uh, uh, Del Toro seem mm-hmm. similar to me. Yeah. yeah. It's like they have internalized their fandom for horror, they know the the. The, mm-hmm. the look and the imagery and the characters and the motivation, but it seems like they're almost incapable of making a scary movie, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, but maybe that's not their intent. I yeah, don't know. It doesn't uh, seem like it. No. So I would recommend it. Michaela, what'd you think? Yeah, I think it's amazing how enduring this character is, right? Like even just the silhouette of the headless horseman on like a pumpkin or Halloween decorations, yeah. everyone knows we what love that, that is. It's crazy how ubiquitous that is. Uh, like, Given, I mean, especially in America, because our history is so short, this might be one of our oldest pieces of folklore ever. And I think that's really cool. Like, we should we should exalt the Headless Horseman to the same level as like Mothman and like the like Bigfoot. Like he is that level of legendary. Right. Like we need to put some respect on the Headless Horseman. Um, And I'm always down for any adaptation of this. I feel like if they told me they were going to remake it into another movie, I'd be like, I'll give it a shot because I know the story. I know I like the story. And mm-hmm. for me, as long as it has atmosphere and movement, like it feels like the, it's going somewhere. Mm-hmm. That's kind of all I need out of mm-hmm. this because I, I'm not going for the story because I already know the story. You know, right. um, I do think there's some unnecessary B and C plots in this movie, but I understand you also have to make it like a feature length film because it is a short story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just think that the B and C plots are like hacky and lazy and we've seen them before. So I want to just be like... I, you know, like when you're like a high achieving student in school, you get held to a higher standard. That's how I feel. Like Tim Burton, I know, like I'm going to hold you to a higher standard because I know you're capable of it, you know? Um, so like I'm going to nitpick your work, even though it's pretty much perfect, right. you know? Mm. Um, very minor gripes, but I still have gripes. Um, you know, it's a great movie. It has perfect Halloween atmosphere. It might be his best movie. It's definitely in my top three of his movies, mm-hmm. especially because like, after this, it is he never Leak. recovers. He never <laughs> recovers, in my opinion, after this movie. So, uh, yeah, you got to see it if you haven't seen it already. Um, I would love to see it. Uh, maybe not like a drive-in, but if anyone did like a cornfield or cemetery showing mm. of this movie, like watching this in a cemetery would be really cool. And then just hire someone to like horseback ride. Through yeah, the- yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's so simple that like the sound of hoofbeats are now threatening because it's you know right. like I love I love the simplicity yeah. of it. Yeah, definitely recommend it. Sean, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I can't say much more than you guys yeah. have. The atmosphere is great. It's got a stacked cast. Um, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it, I mean, it's fun. I mean, Johnny Depp's doing, uh, Johnny Depp's doing very well as his character. Uh, again, I have little, uh, little gripes about, I mean, we get a little too complex with the story at certain points, but again, you know, uh, you gotta do something to, you've changed the story a little bit and you gotta do something to make it longer than a short story. Um, but other than that, man, it just, it looks great. It feels great. Um, yeah, uh, there's not much to dislike about this movie. Um, I, I want to live in upstate New York mm-hmm. in these. It's trees. amazing. Like, it upstate just, New York is beautiful. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, again, a beautiful mm-hmm. looking movie. We do uh, have a sleepy hollow not far from here. That's mm-hmm. very true. And Let's I go. think the headless horseman is the mascot. I, I think. think oh, is. it has to yeah. be. Yeah. It would have to be. Yeah. Any like you have to, any sleepy hollow has to be that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think you guys, uh, uh, dear listeners, dear brailers, you have to watch it again. Mm-hmm. I think we could cut out some stuff from this. I don't need that. Ch- backstory with his mother i think we can get that real quick and real simple mm-hmm. but again i think we're just nitpicking mm-hmm. at something that is uh good most of the way around and i really enjoyed it um yeah sleepy hollow you should watch it watch mm-hmm. it now <laughs> all right it's spooky. It's spooky you can even yes. go we're going in november watch it then too yeah like, it's, it's good for that specific, mm-hmm. yeah, just, yeah, we're, we're in that era the fall. yeah watch yeah. the fall it's good um well i guess that's a uni- universal recommend unanimous so that means yep. that you have to watch it by contract, by listening to the mm-hmm. show. And, so, and uh, oh, I'll, I forgot to mention, there's a little line on that contract that says you have to watch the TV show we were just talking about. No. Yeah, oh, so always got to watch it. She just no, said she would it. check sorry, out no, sure. <laughs> You've listened to the episode. Now you have to yeah. watch it. I'm sorry. I disagree. The first episode. <laughs> of the you TV also show. have to watch it. Nope, not going to do it. Yep. 
Um, You're not curious just a little no, bit? No, I remember it being like for a TV show. It was okay. You know, I like the movie Kate and Leopold. I might like this show. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, you oh, know? That's true. So I'm not uh, against in, time in traveling. In a world where we've decided that you would like the TV show Lucifer? Yeah. 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 We all decided that you would oh, like yeah. that? Yeah. Well, you I said think that. You, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. The closest I'm, but I'm, I'm more apt to watch Lucifer than I am Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> there you go. Okay. But, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly, since I feel like I stole her pick for this one. Nah, kind of. Okay. But uh, what are we going to watch next week? Um, we're going to round out our final spooky season movie. Mm. We're going to watch Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Ah, Otherwise okay. known as Creep Show 3, perhaps? Oh, no, that's... That, well, well, yeah, I know. Uh, we'll talk yeah. about it. Okay, all right. We'll all right. I have not seen this. All yeah, right. I haven't either. Tales from the Dark cool. Side next week. The movie. The movie. Mm, the movie. Yeah. Next week <laughs> on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.